All right, thanks for joining us. Today's edition, it is Wednesday, December 13th. Hard to believe. Uh, thanks for joining us on today's edition of Chaos to Clarity. We're going to continue to take a look at this storm coming up the eastern seaboard for the weekend. Some changes here. It's, it is a complicated setup, as they almost always are. In fact, there's three pieces that we're going to be tracking with this system. I want to show you the satellite. We'll go full screen so you can see it here. So this is piece one. This is the upper low. This is piece two. This will drop into, or at least some of it, drop into the upper low. The more energy that drops into this, the stronger it's going to be. And then this is piece number three. This is the steering mechanism. This will determine how quickly uh, the storm comes northward and how far north the storm comes as we head into next week. So three distinct pieces. This was the piece that I was following yesterday. It was in Mongolia. Now it's in, well, it's going to be getting into the Barents Sea. So those are the three pieces that will ultimately decide the fate um, of this uh, of this storm here. All right, let me take you in toward the modeling here, and we'll, we'll show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, let's start with the 500 millibar here, and I, I want to go, let's go right to Friday morning, and you can see the different pieces here. So this is piece one, that's the upper low, this is piece two. Now, here's, here is where we get a little confused here. How much of this energy drops into the upper low? I can tell you the European and the GFS doesn't drop much of it into it. The Canadian drops a lot of it into it. And the more energy that drops into this system, the stronger it's going to be. Now, the GFS, to me, looks like it's a little out on its own. I'll show you what I'm talking about here shortly here. So let's take the modeling here as we continue to look at the 500 millibar and what that track these two pieces of energy. We go, uh, let's go toward Friday afternoon, Friday evening. There we go. Two pieces of energy. You see them? Here's... Piece one, here's piece two. Now watch as we move forward here. And then, I'll, oh, by the way, let me show you the difference in the modeling here. So this is the European, this is the Canadian, and this is the GFS. Somewhat similar, not much differences as we go through the period. European, Canadian, GFS. So, or you could also think of it this way. The European, the Canadian, and the American, if you want to do it that way. All right, so there you go. Let's continue to move this. This is Saturday evening. European, Canadian. European and the Canadian look very similar. You see that? There's a little difference in strength, but the positioning of the systems look very similar to me with a weakening of the upper low, but a strengthening of that northern piece. And here's the GFS, which is, again, it kind of keeps this system down and, and keeps it a little stronger, a little longer. All right. Now, here we go into Sunday morning. Now, this is why the Europeans not as strong with the low pressure system uh, next week, because it really doesn't drop it into it. You see, you, you, you have a closed off low, but the energy didn't drop into it. It's actually separate from it. You do have energy coming in on the eastern side, and this is going to enhance it. But you didn't get a full drop of this piece of energy into that southern upper low, so it's not as strong. I'll show you the ramifications of that. It is interesting, though, that that's the 7 o'clock Sunday morning, so that is the European. The Canadian, see, it's very similar, except it has more energy across Florida, you see that, than the European. So it's showing a stronger system. The GFS is just, I don't know. I don't know what the GFS is doing. It's got two closed upper lows. This is the southern piece. This is the northern piece. I don't know. I, uh, that just looks too weird to me. It, it, it doesn't make sense. By the way, we'll talk about piece number three here in a second. But see, that, that's the first idea, how much of this energy drops into it. And if it drops in enough, it's going to be a strong system. Now, the GFS kind of keeps these separate. You see, watch what it does as we move in the Saturday evening. Eventually, it drops in, but it weakens the, the first upper low and then closes off an upper low back here in Tennessee. So you end up getting a storm that's farther inland. It's much weaker. It kind of looks like the odd man out. Contrast that with what we're looking at the European here. Let me turn off my pad. Here's the European. See, you've got a system coming up the eastern seaboard, and it looks somewhat strong. Here it is, but, you know, it's an elongated low. It's not really a consolidated area low pressure here and I'll show you what that difference is here in a second. So remember that that's Monday, late Monday night. Here's the Canadian, little different than the European. It has a stronger southern piece. You can see it. 
Um, it has a stronger northern piece farther south. And then as you get in the Sunday morning, European, Canadian, European, Canadian. European is definitely a weaker solution, weaker trough overall. The Canadian, a stronger presentation. You can see with almost closed off upper low. So what happened is the upper low came down, the northern piece, southern piece gets drawn in, and then all of a sudden you got a pretty strong storm along the mid-Atlantic coast. You see that? Now, let me show you the surface panel here really quick, and you can see the difference uh, in the uh, in the modeling here. Let's take you out to the surface map here really quick, and I'll show you the difference here. So uh, here we go. Here is the European, and watch as the evolution of this. By the way, Florida is just going to be absolutely crunched Saturday into Sunday with rain, thunderstorms. Don't be surprised if there's severe weather, isolated tornadoes as well. So here's the European. See, it's an elongated low. What The pressure goes down to 993, 991. That's it. Now, it still has a storm coming up the coast, but it never really has a strong surface system. The GFS, this is where the GFS is out on its own. It, it's closing the upper low farther west, so you, your storm is actually not offshore. Instead, it's coming inland. And it's, it's relatively weak. Now, you're still going to have rain and wind along the East Coast, but it's not as much. The Canadian is the one that's interesting the most because here's the Canadian. And we'll compare it. So the European-Canadian. European-Canadian. Not much difference here, but watch what happens as we go forward here. Uh, this is Monday morning. It has a low-pressure system uh, off the New Jersey coast, off the Virginia coast, by the way, at 982 millibars. The European, pretty much same location, 993. The difference is it has a stronger upper level, and that's why it's a stronger storm, right? So there's the Canadian. There's 7 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Storm off the Virginia coast, 983, 982, and the GFS is way back across North Carolina. I kind of reject that. Let's take it to 7 o'clock Monday evening. European, 993. The Canadian, 979. I mean, this would be a big problem here for, for the mid-Atlantic and southern New England. I mean, you'd have major coastal inundation here of at least a couple of feet with strong onshore winds. I mean, it would you, you can argue this would, this would have tropical storm force winds sustained. I mean, true tropical storm force if it got down to 977 in here. You see that? The time frame is, is Monday here. So... I'm not sure the Canadian is 100% right on this, but you know what? I'm rejecting the GFS that you're going to get a storm that goes inland. I think you're going to get a storm up the coast. The question I have is how strong is it going to be? Let me take you back to the 500 millibar and just, again, why is there such differences uh, in there? Well, let me take you back to the, uh, to the uh, uh, upper level. So we're talking about Monday, and you can see the differences here. See, European, Monday morning, European, Canadian. European, look at the Canadian, locks off the upper low. So what it's doing is it's kind of combining the southern piece, the northern piece, so piece one into piece two into a strong system. You see that? So you have a closed off upper level low right over Richmond with the surface storm off the New Jersey, co uh, off the Virginia coast, and it's strengthening because the upper level is strengthening. You see that? Look at that. European, more elongated. All right. It's elongated with it. It's not as strong. So your surface isn't going to be as strong. So that's the difference in modeling right now with this. I, I, I think some kind of a hybrid in between makes sense that perhaps the European is, uh, is, is too weak, but the, um, but the Canadian is a little too strong. That's what I would think we're looking at here uh, with, with this. Let me uh, turn this back on. So you can see it. So that's what I'm kind of thinking with this. That's what we're looking at. That this is a little too... I like the Canadian and European track right up the eastern seaboard. So the time frame on this is going to be Sunday night, Monday morning. Let's say Sunday night, Monday morning. Carolina, Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina coast. Or let's say Georgia, Carolina coast. And then Monday, Monday night, mid-Atlantic coast. Monday night, Tuesday across New England. Now, the one other thing that we're going to keep an eye on is the steering part of the storm. That's piece three. I didn't even talk about that. Let me show you that here quickly here. So let me go back. So this is the, uh, is the uh, piece that's going to decide how far north this gets. It's this northern piece as we move forward here. Let me take you into Saturday, Sunday. See, it's this. 
it's this trough here, here. Now, the stronger this is, the more likely it takes this system and brings it right up the coast. Now, it's so far west, I don't think it's going to steer it out to sea. Both the Canadian and the European have the same solution with this system. You see it? They have it far enough north, maybe the European stronger, but it's far enough north and west that it guides the system up to sea. What the European does is it keeps it so far north. Look at the difference, European, Canadian, European. Look at that area south of James Bay. You see that? Where am I looking? I'm looking right in here. Note the differences between the, uh, the um, GFS on this piece of energy right here. Notice the difference. GFS, European. GFS, European. See how much farther south that is? GFS, European. So because the European has this farther north, this low not only goes inland, but it kind of meanders out very slowly. So I just think the, your GFS is on its own on this. All right, let me show you what I'm expecting with this, and then we'll call it a day. But I think this is going to be a formidable storm coming up the eastern seaboard, and I'm not ready to buy the Canadian that it goes down to 977, and you pretty much have tropical storm conditions along the mid-Atlantic and, and, and all the way up to Jersey Shore, shore toward New England, uh, toward, uh, um, well, southeastern New England as well. But I do think that we're going to have some problems with this as we, we, we move forward here. So this is what I'm expecting as we move forward. I didn't change anything here. I kind of like this map. I'll put it on full screen so you can see it. Uh, there it is. I mean, th this really looks to me like a strong coastal wind and beach erosion. Now, we could have some huge problems in this area if that low goes down to 977 millibars. This would, you know, you, you would get a, a, like tropical storm force conditions here. No doubt about it, all right? I'm going to go somewhere in between. I think it's a formidable blow here from the Carolinas and all the way up in the east of New England. I think there's going to be a flooding risk, especially I-95 toward the coast. But I'll tell you what, there's no cold air. There just isn't any cold air with this. So this is mostly going to be snow. That will be up in the mountains and mostly in New England. I, I, I have my doubts whether you would get any here back across the Appalachians or even the Allegheny Front. I think you're up in here, Green and White Mountains, Adirondacks. Uh, maybe the Catskills on the back end, maybe we'll see. But this looks like a pretty big storm as we head toward the weekend here. And again, we're going to continue to focus in on the three pieces. Let me go back to that. The three pieces that kind of make this um, the storm that it's going to be. Right here. One, two, three. Three, these two determine the strength. This is going to be the speed, number one. And number two, whether it comes up the coast or out to sea, that's this piece. All right, that's it for me today. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you can uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Accurano. And uh, always happy to do this. And uh, uh, thanks for watching.